Hello, my name's Steve from APC. So now let's introduce the ACCAP3 business analysis. So business analysis to a perf launch review, quite lots of things that we have already covered in the ACCA F1 already. And I know some of you have got exemption from the ACCA F1. Perhaps some of you haven't got the exemption for that particular paper. So it doesn't really matter to a perfect launch review because in the ACCA P3, we'll go through all of those bits and pieces together. And then we're going to quickly apply that into the exam standard questions. Don't worry about this. So now let's look at the syllabus related to P3. I mean, P3 business analysis is all about setting up a strategy. But the question is, what do I mean by strategy then? There'll be lots of definition of this strategy. Of course, ACCA has got its own definition of the strategy. And of course, I will have our own uh, definition for strategy as well. So our definition for strategy is the way to do things. And that's it. For example, you lower down your selling price because you lower down your cost base for your products. Of course, that's your strategy. You develop a new product. Yes, that's your strategy. And perhaps you start the joint venture with another party. Yes, that would be a strategy. Or perhaps like Madonna, you're going to franchise the way that you do business to others. Yes, that's your strategy as well. You acquire another company. Yes, that's your strategy. You expand your markets, for example, into India or Singapore expanding overseas, yes, that will be a strategy. You outsource your function to somebody else who do, who do that for you, that's your strategy as well. So strategy is just a broad term. But to perfectly honest with you, when you are defining the strategy, we are particularly focusing on the long term rather than the short term. Normally it will be more than one year for the business because we are looking forward and in addition to that, what we have to do is we're going to consider all those stakeholders involved. So for example, if you expand the business overseas, perhaps you have to deal with the government, you have to deal with the transfer pricing, or perhaps you have to deal with the bank and also local employees. And as a result of it, those stakeholders surely will have a big impact onto your organisation. So we are going to consider into that as well. And of course, some of you, or in some of the textbooks, you also see the word competitive advantage. Yes, why are you going to set to a strategy? It's simply because the way that you do things, and then you're going to quickly build up your competitive advantage so that you can stand out from this market. Yes, of course, that will be included into the strategy as well. So strategy is just to be a broad term. It's the way that we do things. So having said that, from the P3 syllabus perspective, personally, I would divide that into two chapters in particular. So the chapter one that we're going to cover is before setting up the strategy, there'll be quite a few things that we're going to consider then. The first thing that we're going to consider from the P3 exams perspective is to deal with the corporate governance. In particular, when this comes up in the exam, normally you are in the family-based company. So in the family-based companies, of course, we tend to use the two-tier board structure. That means the family members, yes, sitting on top, and we are sitting in the bottom. We are just a management board. And as a result of it, we have to consider the risks attitude of the family members when making any of these are decisions. I mean, although perhaps the option one, if we're going to do this, that the return will be very high. But perhaps we'll have to suffer quite a lot of risks. But family members don't like risk quite often. And as a result of it, not only we're going to consider the return that it is, this option will bring us, but also we have to consider the risks that we're going to suffer. So that's the reason why it's very, very important when talking about the corporate governance in the P3, we're not copying the knowledge from the P1 because that's just to be nonsense. All we're going to concentrate on is we're going to apply this knowledge into the actual case 
that the examiner has given us. And that's the way that the P3 examiner has tested us uh, in this particular topic. And then we need to look at the culture as well. So culture, according to Charles Handy, is the way that people do things around here. Similar to strategy, as I talked to before. And of course, culture will impact on the behaviour that people have within the organisation. So for example, why are you going to go to work on time? For example, at 9am, not at 10am. Because this is stated by the organisation, and also you can say that if you go to work very late, you'll be punished. Because you're afraid of being punished, so what you're going to do then, is the way that you do things around here is to arrive at work on time, perhaps. Why are you working so hard? Because you have an objective. Because you want to be a naughty partner. Because after being a naughty partner, you have got the nice sports car that the audit firm may give you. And perhaps you've got the nice office, yes, that the audit firm will give you. So that's the reason why you work very hard in order to achieve those objectives. Yes, that would be the culture. It's simply because the audit firm or the organisation has given you the symbol of doing so. And that's the reason why you do things around here. Yes? So it influence the way that you do things around here. So that's the culture. As I said before, before setting up your strategy, you have to also consider the stakeholders as well. And of course, we are going to use a particular model called Mendelo's Matrix model to classify all those stakeholders and how we're going to deal with them. What do I mean by stakeholders then? Stakeholders are somebody who would impact on the company or being influenced by the company. Think about the customer. Customer will impact on the company is simply because if we haven't got enough customers to buy a product, we don't make any profit and then our company cannot survive. And at the same time, the customers will be impacted on by the company. It's simply because if our company puts up the prices, of course, maybe fewer customers will buy products from our organisation. That's the stakeholder. And also, very, very importantly, we have to consider the CSR, which is the corporate social responsibility. It's part of the ethics requirement. Yes, that would be absolutely important. It's simply because if you are not ethical, for example, if you are not making any profit, yes, you can't pay taxes. The government cannot utilise the tax to help with the poor guys within the society. That's not good. If we don't care about the society, and that means we are not paying for our employees' uh, good reward package, we are not keeping them happy, we are not helping the society, for example, of course, the society will be upset about this, yeah? Planet, we have to care about the environment because if this is not the case, we'll be punished perhaps if we are damaging the environment. So nowadays, in the P3 exam, we are particularly focusing on the CSR strategy as part of our strategy setting. It's simply because by having a good policy on the CSR, Surely, from a company or organisation's perspective, you will stand out in the marketplace. So that's the chapter one, it's before setting up the strategy, hope you're happy with it. Now let's come, part two, uh, come to chapter two, it's where we set up the strategies. According to Johnson and Shows and Whittington, of course you don't have to know that name in the exam, we will divide that strategy into three levels. First level is the top level, it's called corporate strategy. And then business strategy is the middle level. And then operational strategy is the lower level. So what are they then? First of all, corporate strategy tells us which industry that you are in. For example, we are in the education industry. Yes, that will be a corporate strategy. We will go to mining industry. Yes, that will be your corporate strategy as well. The second question within the corporate strategy, it tells you what is the balance of your portfolios. So that means, of course, within a group, we've got many of these subsidiaries, yeah? So for each of these subsidiaries, 
either we're going to keep that within our group or we're going to sell it off to somebody else because we found it is not profitable, perhaps. And of course, we will base the copper strategy, I mean, upon quite a few theories, for example, the life cycle theories, BCG matrix model, or sometimes the asset portfolio model as well. Of course, we will go through that in the due course. Don't worry, that's the copper strategy. So once you look at the copper strategy telling us which industry that we should be in, we come now to business strategy telling us how we're going to compete with our competitors. As I said to you before, perhaps we can lower down our prices. Yes, that would be a business strategy. We are going to develop a new product. Yes, that would be a business strategy. Or perhaps we're going to expand into a new market. For example, build up the online shop or perhaps expand into overseas. Yes, that would be a business strategy. So before you're making those options, as I said to you before, yeah, for example, lower down prices, building up a new online shop, or perhaps expanding into the overseas market. So those are called options, strategic options. So before you selected a correct or appropriate or reasonable strategic choice based upon those options, what you have to do is going to go through the position within the organization. We're going to analyze the position within the organization by conducting a SWOT analysis. Because think about it this way. If you like to expand your market overseas, fine. But you have to question yourself. Have you got a strong brand related to your product? If the answer for this is no, I haven't got a strong brand related to my product, how are you going to expand overseas? That's the strength within your company if you have got a strong brand. But it would turn into a weakness if you haven't got one. So after we're analysing the position, we come up with lots of these options that I just mentioned before, expanding overseas, etc. And then you based upon those, you conduct the evaluation test. And in the due course, I'm going to give you a mnemonic called SFA test to see whether or not the strategy is suitable, is feasible, is acceptable. For example, in the family-based company, although the strategy has given us a quite high return, but perhaps it will be rejected by the family member. It's simply because the risks associated with it is so high. And that's the reason why we're going to reject it, perhaps. And based upon those three steps, we can then select the strategic choice from those options given after analysing the company's internal and external environment. Of course, there'll be quite a lot of these models within the business strategy. For example, the um, Porter's Value Chain, Peso, Porter's Five Forces, Porter's Diamond. So those will be the things that we will go through in the due course. Don't worry, we will go through them together. So after we set a business strategy, the third level is the lowest level. It's called the operational strategy. So from the operational strategy's perspective, because we are doing something new. So for example, you expand your market into overseas, for example, setting the subsidiary in India, for example. You are conducting a change. And that's the reason why change management is absolutely important. Think about it this way. If you set to a subsidiary there, and you would like to allocate your existing finance director and asking the finance director to locate himself into India, with finance director, accept this offer. Or perhaps you increase his, sal uh, his salary, increase his bonuses, or perhaps it's the uh, total reward package that you're giving to that finance director. But the finance director will say, well, no, thank you. I will not go to India because my family's in the UK, for example. And as a result of it, how are you going to I mean, manage the change in order to facilitate your strategy will be absolutely important in the P3. And also doing something new, for example, expanding your marketing services. Yes, that's doing a project. How are you going to manage the project as well? So that will be very, very important indeed. 
operational strategy is what I mean by we're going to put all those corporate and business strategy into action. And within the operational strategy, quite a lot of things that we will go through. For example, we're going to see how we're going to improve our business processes because we've got different activities in there. So for example, we are going to deal with, for example, the research and development. So if you care about the research and development, this activity, within that activity, there will be lots of business processes in there. For example, process one is to engage an expert. Process two is to buy the technology, for, for example. Process three is to test it, for example. So processes are included into different activities. So how are you going to improve those business processes in order to make it more economy, efficient and effective? Yes, those will be the things that we're going to cover. And of course, we will explain what do I mean by BPR in a second. Supply chain management is absolutely key. It's simply because, for example, you buy the product yes, at a low price and then you're going to sell it at a higher price so it can make more sales revenue. But the question is, if you buy at a low price, how are you going to make sure that the quality related to that raw material is good? Supply chain management, very, very important. How are we going to engage with the suppliers? E-business, yes, for example, e-commerce, building up the online shop to increase the sales revenue. Organizational structure, yes, very, very important indeed. Whether or not you're going to centralize the function or decentralizing it. We've got many questions in there. Marketing, yes, it's the way that we're going to improve our sales revenue. So all sorts of things that we will cover in the due course in order to facilitate the corporate as well as the business strategy. So I hope you're happy with this particular introduction to the ACCA P3. I hope you found it interesting. And of course, in the P3 nowadays, the examiner will also test you about the management accounting knowledge and some of the financial management knowledge that you have studied in the P4 and also in the F9 and also in the F5 for the management accounting paper. And of course, we will go through all of them in our due course. Don't worry, we're here to help with your ACC P3 exam success. So look forward to seeing you in the actual class. Thank you. APC, accounting for your future.